afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Friday, July 26, 2024, the last of 3.15 p.m. Eastern. I'm having a reverse aging health call tonight and all the rest. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, new avenues as far as the body and, of course, a bunch of other stuff. We have this uh, structure, I'll put it that way, and we have a, a lot of the things we don't comprehend. Uh, we don't have the ample source information to do so. So it goes unacknowledged, so to speak. And I've said it several times that we, we have everything we'll ever need, ever beyond and forever. So in these bodies, there's, uh, we have conduits, right? You could call them, and this came up today, which kind of, you, they're conduits, the DNA strands, okay, highways. And these bodies we're in have about 12 uh, that are offline. That's the way to put it. And we've heard, you know, different scenarios that, you know, some big flash is going to happen, they're all going to come on, and, you know, other things that this is going to just happen out of the clear blue. This is connected to our capacity with these bodies to evolve. And I think we all know what evolve is. You know, we move from one state to the next to survive, to, to continue the species, to uh, flourish and expand rather than to become um, less and you know, minor, and, and then eventually wave out. Now we have, some of us have this understanding. We've been on this track of countless lifetimes, all of us. And we've been on this track that we go through this kind of a grinder, right? We we incarnate and we experience the life and then we leave the body and the life is done and then uh, the physical material life is done and then oh we keep coming back we keep for the most part we keep entering uh, new bodies and having new lives and this goes on and on and on and we also have we right now we have future lives going on okay now obviously we, we don't we don't know quite how to plug into those kind of dangerous to do that because what is this all about why do we have this fragmentation it's because we haven't discovered who and what we are this is why we have the fragmentation. We do it. it. It's you know it's not really done for us. We do it, and this is why we're in this kind of a circle jerk of reincarnation, 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 reincarnation. Is because we have not discovered who and what we are. Now, when we discover who and what we are, and we understand that you know, and we master our thoughts, and we master our ego mind and we, we operate or we come from the heart mind, not the ego mind. And the heart mind's in charge. It's over the ego mind. And we master our thoughts. So at that stage, we evolve. That's what this is all about. So what happens when we evolve? Well, we, we, the body changes. Okay? You, you have... Like I said, we, we have everything we'll ever need. And so we have these dormant highways, DNA highways. 
and those dormant DNA highways will start to come online. Now, they aren't going to come online when you do not know who and what you are and you haven't mastered the ego mind and you haven't mastered your thoughts. That's not going to happen. It won't. Not in a million years it's not going to happen. Literally. Until you discover completely. Yeah, you know, some of us superficially, we kind of know this and know that. and That's where we stop ourselves and we don't go any further. And we've gotten into the habit, obviously, it's an easy, easy habit to get in for all of us on this planet, is just that we just keep incarnating. You know, we go life, 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 life. And, and we don't usually, usually. There's some bleed through with some people on occasion. But for the most part, we don't remember. Uh, you know, we leave the life, we do another one, we leave that life, but we don't remember those at all. Some people have, you know, maybe one life remembered and then they write a book or they talk about it or they do a movie or whatever. Now, what we do on these meditations is tremendously important for our evolution. You're not, you know, every, every which way but loose has been tried throughout the ages of how do we access this? How do we do it? And there's been all kinds of different meditations. And, you know, some are intricate and involved, and then there's other ones that are the... But all in all, meditation is finding a comfortable place, leaning into the body to relax, Focusing on the breath, you're as still as a statue, focusing on the breath, rise and fall, space between heartbeats. And that brings us into the now. And people, might, one might say, what the heck is the now? I hear people talk about the now all the time. What's the now? It's a moment to moment. So whatever in that moment, you're there. And it's moment to moment. So in other words, you're, you're not in tomorrow at all. Nowhere near tomorrow. You're nowhere near yesterday. You're only in that moment, that very small moment. Space between heartbeats. Breath rising and falling. That's the now. You can see by doing that, practicing that, that the mind chatter is gone, the worry, stress, fear, anxiety is gone, the um, ego mind's gone. It's not there. So what do you think, what, what happens there with us? Do we, do we know that? Do some of us, do we know that in the meditation, it, it's not there. We don't, we don't entertain it. It's not there. We've left the mind and ego alone, and we're only in the moment. That's how we live, only in the moment, period. Now, I, I'm not saying that it's, for many, that it's an easy thing, because like I've said in the past, is that we, we, we all are creatures of habit. We all, each of us have a different habit. We all have habits, okay? And it doesn't mean they're bad habits. Maybe some of them aren't good for the body that we have, but... We all have them. We, we, with this physical material life and this, uh, these bodies, we, we have that tendency to habitualize something. could be anything. Uh -oh. We'll read the morning paper at a certain time every single day, no matter what. That's a habit. Okay. Um, taking care of the body is a habit. We do a lot of that. Not that we... I don't believe that most of us are aware of it, okay? Why would we be? We just we do certain things and we get to the point where we just keep doing them over and over again. And I've often said, and I do this, I make it a, 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 I make it a point for myself to every day, you know, we all have a regimen. No matter what it is, we all are regimented with certain things. So, to break it up, I, I do something a little bit different um, that 
shifts it just a tad, not tremendously so. But you do it every day. You do something different. Kind of like you know, adding a little extra spice to something when you're you know, cooking or eating. And it tastes different, right? So that's what I do to stay out of, for the most part, a continual habit. Now, to the naked eye, it may not seem that one has shifted anything and that they view them as being in that same habit. But I actually save things, and then I apply myself to them, which makes a difference during that habit. See, the different things that we get uh, wedged into, that we, that we put ourselves into. And you'd be amazed what happens when you do that when you're aware. And you, and you know that, okay, I, I'm going to do this this way today and not that way. Or I'm, maybe I'm not going to have uh, my breakfast at this time. And maybe I won't have these things in the breakfast. Maybe I'll just do this over here. You see what I mean? And it's a subtle And in this sum, it's insignificant, but it makes a big impact for us because it keeps things moving. It keeps us progressing. We all know that doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, is nutsy cuckoo. Uh, We've seen that in our past as a country and, and and the planet and if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get the same results. So it's kind of like that. You shift it. You change. And it doesn't upset, you know, your apple cart. You just, a little bit, here and there. Uh, And then you get into the understanding that it it kind of livens, it changes things, okay? And... We know that anything that changes isn't real anyway, and it's our entertainment. But we, that's what we do. We, we shift things. Yeah. You, you might say to yourself, well, you know, every year I do a garden, but this time I'm going to do it differently. You see? And then we learn. Because how often have you, okay, so you're going to do a task, you do something, right? And you know how to do it, and you do it. And then some other applications you start reading about, and you say, oh, maybe I'll try that instead of the way I've always done it. So you do that, and you go, wow, you know, I really messed that up. But you learn from it, and then eventually you do it, and it shifts things for the better. It's like you take the same road every day for 30 years, right? Right? And you say, you know what? I'm not going to take this road anymore. I'm going to take the other road. And so you take the other road. But when you do that and you take the other road, you're very aware because that's a new direction. So anything can happen when you take that new road when you've been taking the other road for 30 years. So you've got to be aware of that. Anything. Not, not doom and gloom. But you say to yourself, this is an open field. Anything's possible. That's new to me. And don't we like new things? This is another thing that pulls us away from sedentarianism, where we become fixed in our lives. So when you say you do something different, or it might be you have a dinner, right? And you're always ordering the same thing. It's safe. You know it, and it tastes good, and so you order it. And then you get with a group of people, and they say, you know, and it's a different menu, and, but you see it's similar to what you've always ordered on there. You go, no, I'm not going to order that today, tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pick one of these other things and see how that is. See, it's called adventure, being adventuresome. And it's not a huge scale, but you know what I mean. We, we do these little things... Because it's fun and it's an unknown. We don't know if we're going to like it, right? But we're going to, yeah, we're going to give it a give it a give it a shot. We'll we'll do we'll do it. It's like you're used to wearing a certain color for years and years and years for certain reasons. Then you say, you know what? I'm not going to wear this color anymore. 
I'm going to shift it and just start changing different colors and see how I feel with those colors. Because a lot of us are visual, right? When we look at each other, what do we do? What, what are the things we do when we look at each other? Well, ego mind's there. We know that. And so we, we're compelled a lot of the times to critique people, to evaluate them. You know, oh, they look, at, look at how fat that guy is. Or, you know, wow, why, how can that couple be together? You know what I mean? We, we all do it. But that's ego mind. So then you say, you know, I'm not going to do this from the ego mind. I'm going to just be, I'm going to watch. And some people will go to the airport. You know, the airport's in their town or something. They'll go to the airport and they'll just sit there. They'll watch, you know, the terminal areas. And they just watch people. That's it. And now you look at it, why are you watching people? Because I can learn. I watch how other people operate in their lives. And this is a reflection parts of me, so it shows me things. You might be looking at someone, you know, grappling with their bags, okay? And you go, you know, I, I don't think I would do that. You know, I can see the problems they're having. So I would, I would do it this way. So we see, in a way, we teach each other all the time. And it's like some of us, we, 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 we learn and we do things because we want to become self-sufficient, Right? And some people will learn about their cars and they'll learn about certain basics that they can do and understand and change a tire. And nowadays we don't change many tires because of how the tires are configured, but on occasion you change a tire, know how to change a tire. You know, the basic workings of a combustible engine and the different things that can go wrong and we're aware of. And then some people just are do-it-yourselfers. They just figure it out. Well, and nowadays what... You know, the one, one of the wonderful things with YouTube is, all amongst its negatives, is that it is a plethora of knowledge, education of other people wanting to help other people. It's amazing when you look at that platform purely uh, for helping and doing good things. It's absolutely amazing. You know, you guys have done it. You probably just type in something. I'll, I'll go to YouTube and see if someone's come up with something that can help me with this. And sure enough, someone did. Someone came up with a way to put this in or install this or do this or do that. And all you got to do is watch it a few times, and you kind of know. And so you're able to do it. Now, you know, 50, 60 years ago, we didn't have any of that. And so there's a lot of positives to certain things that get a lot of banging and tearing down and everything. But then you look at the, where there's good, there's bad, and where there's bad, there's good. If you always see in anything, you can look, just like the, the um, YouTube, you can look at things from a different perspective and say, what's good about this? What are the positives? You'd be amazed on all the positives you find. Instead of always, you know, we gravitate towards the negatives, and so... You know, I'm not going to gravitate towards the negatives. I'm going to gravitate towards the positives and see what the positives are. You might say to yourself, okay, what are the positives of this whole unraveling going on? What, what's the, what are the positives? Well, you usually we know that we'll gravitate towards the negatives, so we make it a point through our awareness to say, no, I know what that's about. Been there many times. I don't care to go there now. I'm going to focus on the positives. I know there's negatives, sure, okay, but I'm focusing on the positives. And that helps us immensely to navigate this beast-filled jungle, okay? And we're able to navigate it because we're looking at a lighter, more higher energetic frequency than we normally do. If something happens, what, where, do we, where, where do we go? Where, it's usually we drop down a couple of frequencies. Oh, I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, yeah, if I do this, this is going to happen. And we, we literally are such 
powerful master creators, we don't really know it. By making one comment, we send it into manifestation. And you ever notice something? Maybe, maybe some people maybe that about 99.9% of everything you worry about never happens. You, you ever you ever experience that? I mean, you worry, worry, worry about something coming up, it comes up, and, and all the things that you were f- fearful about that didn't happen. It's like when we assume something. We all have assumed things in our lives, these lives. And so when we assume it, we, we, we kind of say, well, this is what's probably going to happen. And then that comes up, and we go, wow, I was so off on that, it's unreal. So what do you learn from that? Well, you learn not to assume and just let the universe take it. Don't assume anything. Have you ever assumed something you thought that was absolutely on the mark? You didn't have any question, any doubt whatsoever. And then, boom, it totally, totally different than what you had assumed. So you look at that and say, okay, I am not going to assume anything anymore. I will let the universe handle all of that. I'm going to enjoy my life. So this is all about the practicing. Now, some people don't have the time. Isn't it amazing? We don't have the time to discover the gods we are and then take the next step in our evolution, but we have all the time in the world to worry, stress, fear, and have anxiety and be concerned about this and that. Doing busy things. You ever ever look at it? You're just doing busy things that really don't have much impact on you. Busy things. And a lot of us are so guilt-ridden that we always feel that we have to be doing something because we feel guilty if we don't. We feel like we're wasting time if we don't, aren't constantly doing things. And I'll tell you right now, the, the, you know, the American people um, in this country are so overworked and so stressed out not like, yeah, we always have that, those kinds of things through life, but not to the, to the extent it is now. I mean, you know, in the 50s and the 60s, even in the early 70s, we, we were different. We, we relaxed more. We enjoyed life more. Yeah, there were still the problems here and there. There were still challenges here and there, but not, nothing like, the way things are now because what we're witnessing is what we have manifested right up there front and center is that a negative no it's not negative being aware of it is absolutely a positive so you look around the landscape you look around you and you see all this stuff and you say well I was a part of manifesting this I'm part of the collective consciousness and you are And then you say to yourself, why would I manifest this? What do I, what do I learn from this? What do I experience from this? What am I experiencing from this? And you've got to be very careful, see, because we, you, know, you know that the ego mind's sitting right there waiting to get you, pull you back in there. So you're aware of that. And it'll throw all kinds of thoughts at you that will try to seduce you out of the now and you'll just say, no, I'm not going to engage in that. I'm, I'm, I'm good right where I am. And I, th- I believe that one step at a time, pe- more and more people, not, not megalithic amounts of people, but more people are embracing the fact that it's time to move on and up for their civilization. It isn't, it isn't up to anybody else but you. That's it. And nobody's going to do it for you. And there isn't going to be a galactic flash and everything's going to be set right and, you know, you'll have gold platters set before you. That's just not going to happen. 
or how are we going to learn with that stuff? You imagine if everything was given to you from birth, from birth. You, you didn't have to, like, do anything laborious. You didn't have to work at your job. You didn't have bills. You, you just grew up that way. And you didn't even know what it, what it You didn't know how to do laundry. Didn't. You didn't know how to use a washer and dryer. You, um, you didn't know how to go grocery shopping. None of those things. None of them. And you just had like a, a Shangri-La bringing up. And I've met people like that. And I, years ago, this was like 20 years ago, I had a conversation with a, a lady that, uh, whose father, uh, get this, this this will, th that he introduced Toyota to America. Right, and he and and for life, he receives some ridiculous amount, like five hundred for every unit sold in America, forever. Now Toyota is a pretty reliable vehicle, right? A lot of Americans have bought them and continue to buy them. Now figure that one out. So that was her father. So she never had. She didn't. You know, she just didn't know. Though, and I, you know, at first I thought she was joking. You know, because you do, because you know, you, most of us know how to do laundry. We know, you know, you this, 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 this. Some of us do it well. Some of us not too well, but we do it. Some of us know how to boil water and cook corn, that type of thing. You know, it's little simple stuff. But she didn't know any of that. Nothing. It's like she would wear clothes, and then if they got dirty, she'd throw them out and get buy new ones. <laughs> Seriously, that's what she did. She didn't make a bad person, but that's how she. That was the habit and the life that she grew up in. Now you switch gears and you have someone else that's raised in a family that struggles all the time, um, but pretty much happy, and they, they do all that stuff. You know, doing dishes and everything. You remember when you did dishes? There was no there were no dishwashers, right? So we just did them. We did dishes. Take a while. You had a big family get together. You know, there's a lot of dishes. So everybody pitch in. Everybody will have some like, some people drying and some people washing. But isn't it funny how things transcend? We go through these stages in our lives that are priceless. Every moment is priceless because we don't know if we're going to have the next moment, and that's why we stay in the now, and that's why we practice. And that's why we go into meditation, because we're ready to evolve. We're ready to move on. We're ready to uh, regenerate our species in a much different light. And you, what, you're, what you're seeing right now is proof positive that our collective consciousness of all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, is kicked into high gear. Whether you realize it or not, you're part of that. You're... You're sending these energetic thoughts to the universe, and you're, you're connected to all of it, all the creation, all the life, everything. You're, part, you're, you're an instrumental part in creating it. So on this little blue marble, on the outer fringe of the Milky Way galaxy, 60 billion years old, so it's matured, we're liberating through our collective consciousness, liberating the planet, and also lifting the pure evil from the planet. Kind of like it's a deep clean. Have you ever done a deep clean where things you just said, man, it's time I do a real thorough cleaning. Things have just gotten out of hand. And you do it. Yeah, it's not necessarily are you going, oh boy, but you go, I, I got to do this. I got to get this done. So you do it. And that's where we're moving, and more and more people are choosing to go there. Yeah, we're aware that you know we're dwindling as a species. We know that. You can feel it. Doesn't matter if there's you know thirty thousand people in your town or you know five million in your city. We're dwindling. We know why we're dwindling. 
and that's a fix. We, you know, it's just like the collective consciousness that we are and part of. We create things. Sometimes we create things to challenge us. Other times we create things to reward us. It just depends. So we have this center of our being. And it is where all of our real power is found. Not out there. Not on the surface. It's our real magic. It's our real magic one. This is where all that we need is located. All that we will ever need is located. And we see discovering that allows us to comprehend that we can create anything we desire. That's a constant. That doesn't go away. You don't lose it. You've had it and you'll always have it. It is this place. It is the place where the, this entire universe we are creating because we're creating this universe step by step. And we're creating it in each moment it is designed. And when we go to where the source of where our thoughts are radiating from, we become the source of life itself. The source of life. All of us are the source of life. The day you are in touch, and it's coming, with the core of what you are, will you be able to grow new roots for stability in your life. Only then and branch out into the skies of your true unlimited potentiality. It's knowing oneself. Know that the self is the rider. The self is the rider. The body is the chariot. The intellect is the, is the charioteer. And the mind the reins, the senses, say the wise are the horses. The roads they travel are the mazes of desire. The wise call the self the enjoyer when it is united with the body. The senses and the mind. That came from the Bhagavad Gita. That's very true. Kind of an elaborate depiction, but it's true. And see, our magical core is buried deep and is hidden beneath layers of beliefs, memories, and ideas about who we are. It is not necessarily at the core of our physical body, yet it is at the core of our being. And for us to find this place, our bodies must be totally relaxed and at ease. That's, there's no other way. Now you may challenge that with yourself. Oh, there's got to be more than that way to do it. There isn't. Now, remember, to find this place, your body must be totally relaxed and at ease. What do, you, what do you believe we're doing in these meditations? That's part of it. When this occurs, your mind and all of its layers of thoughts fall away. You must choose to totally be willing to surrender to this experience of your life in this now moment for total relaxation to take place. 
And when the mind simply lets go of all its planning, scheming, and efforting, your body naturally becomes completely at ease and your core presents itself to you. What is your core? The God that you are, the pure consciousness, the omnipotently powerful supreme being that never dies. A good one. I use this all the time. It's good to know that your mind is your ticket to prison or to freedom. That's it. And by understanding that you do not know everything there is to know just yet, you open your mind to an entirely new world of possibility. One of them is that you are living in a super powerful, manifesting vehicle in a multidimensional infinite universe which has unlimited potentiality and energy to create anything, unlimited. Let this idea during the quiet time of this meditation open your mind Drop all limited perceptions you used to have about what is possible and what is not. This is the greatest opportunity of any of our lifetimes to be open to that anything is possible. Anything. And allow this moment to sink down into your body. Follow it into your deepest innermost essence where you can relax and connect with the most fertile soil, your soul. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close us out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. Then an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still, focus on your breath rising and falling. Know your real self and understand one reason why you are divine. The reason you are divine is because you are an inseparable part of this universe. You're made of pure energy, intelligence, and unbounded consciousness. There is nothing that separates you from God. Nothing except for the idea that you are separate. The moment you drop this separation idea, you'll experience one of the most powerful transformations a human being can have. You'll experience the realization that this all-intelligent divine playground is all your creation. You'll see that everything is happening for you and not to you. When you accept the fact that you are not separate from anything or anyone, life becomes absolutely magical. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night the following morning. We will return here tonight, a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern, to continue our reverse aging health call and all the rest. And Saturday, July 27th, 2024. It'll after 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's going on around you or within you. Open your heart. Allow the magic to flow in.